Hi, and welcome to another episode of Queer View Mirror, a show about queer people, by queer people, for queer people, and our allies. I'm Scott. And I am John. Today we have a very special episode for you, so stay right there because this is Queer View Mirror coming at ya. Wow, Don, I'm super excited about our episode today. We get to talk about one of my favorite things. Wasn't that rough trade with a fistful of molly? What? No. Uh, art and really? the art scene. Oh, so is that what this gorgeous song is going to talk to us about? Oh, hi, Joe. Yes, <laughs> Joe Bembridge is joining us today, and we're going to be discussing the ins and outs of galleries and queer representation. Stay right there. I'm really happy to be introducing Joe Bembridge. He's joining us today as a gallerist, a curator, and as a mentor for young queer artists. Thanks for joining us today, Joe. Perhaps you can tell us where are we? Uh, so we're at the gallery and uh, the gallery operates on the unceded Coast Salish territory of the Laguangan speaking people known as the Songhees and Esquimalt tribes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? How did you get into the world of art? Yeah, so um, initially I uh, thought that I was, well, I went into the performing arts. Mm -hmm. And as a young person, I absolutely loved the theater. And so I pursued a career in that. I studied at Concordia in Montreal. I did a major in theater performance and a minor in interdisciplinary studies of sexuality which uh, was very important and integral in the development of me as a performer. And I pursued that career for a certain amount of time and uh, I kind of decided to walk away from it for mm -hmm. a little bit. And I ended up taking a position as a sales associate at a gallery in Banff, Alberta. And I fell in love. Oh, you found your calling, so I, to speak. I kind of did. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like I was working as a sales associate and I was loving the industry so much. I just loved the opportunity to speak for artists. Um, a lot of artists, it's a very solitary, solid, like they, they work alone. They work mm -hmm. in their studios and they create these beautiful works of art. And some artists, uh, like talking about their work, like selling it, but from my experience, most don't. Mm -hmm. They kind of find that once the piece is created by sending it to a gallery and having a gallerist or sales associates articulate their work um, was something that I loved because I love talking, which you'll find with this episode. <laughs> so when which it comes- Which is not a bad thing. Right? Do you want to interview? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, so being able to talk about people's art and their process and their cre how they create, why they create, I kind of absorb all that. And then, you know, I represent currently uh, over 40 artists from right oh, across wow. Canada. And uh, after about four and a half years as a sales associate, about two and a half years into it, I kind of knew that I wanted to do my own thing and mm -hmm. have my own gallery and invite artists that I wanted to invite. So I studied uh, the owner gallerist of the gallery that I was at. And so I ended up leaving that gallery and then took a couple of years to build up finances and things like that. And then I opened my first gallery, which was in Nanaimo and the rest is her story. <laughs> so what brought you here? To Victoria? Yeah. Yeah, so the plan all along was to end up in Victoria. I love Victoria, I love Vancouver Island. I'm originally from the Rockies in Alberta. And just like any queer person, I ran away from my hometown as fast as I could. At the age of 12. Yeah, pretty close, actually. Okay. I was 14. Oh, wow. So I, I left home early. Adventurous. I was, yeah, it was a little bit of, it was, you know, a, a town that I wasn't able to be queer in. And even oh. at that age, I didn't really know what queer was. Um, it was back in the day where we don't have as much visibility and things like that. So I was kind of in a place where I did have to leave home and I, and I left the town that I grew up in and I ended up at, I found a fine arts high school 
in Edmonton, Alberta, and I had to pay my way through school. So yeah, it was, it was difficult, but the arts were something that kept me going. So in so many ways, I've been blessed. No matter what type of arts, I've been able to be in the arts mm -hmm. pretty much my whole teen life, adult life. And um, yeah, so back to Victoria, how we got here. Five-year plan uh, in Nanaimo to get to Victoria, and I did it in four. Well, so kudos. thank you. <laughs> happy to be here. Happy to have had the time that I did in Nanaimo. But uh, yeah, the goal, Victoria is a very vibrant, fabulous art scene here in visual art, performing art, the drag community. So I'm here. <laughs> and you're queer. <laughs> sure am. Yeah, and where's the rear view mirror? Um, as a gallerist or as a curator, um, for the aspiring artists out there, is there any criteria you kind of work from other than you like it or you don't like it? Huge. Yeah, I love that you asked that because a big part of our mandate is emerging artists. So okay. emerging artists have such a hard time cracking into what we call the gallery system. So the gallery system is art galleries of this caliber. And the gallery that I started out at, like they, they just wouldn't even open the door to emerging artists, artists mm. that didn't have representation. So it was this conversation that, you know, they'd come in and they were either out of art school or maybe were coming into it later in life. And, you know, they'd be like, well, I'm trying to find representation, but if nobody gives me a representation, then how do I get repre mm -hmm. representation? Like, it's just mm. like, how do you get a foot in the door? So I do that. So every I year- I love that, that part of, you know, supporting mm. emerging artists. Right? For sure, because I think some artists can, they can fall through the cracks. And, mm -hmm. you know, when we look at some of the iconic artists that we look at now, whose pieces, you know, are in the museums and, and highly curated, somebody gave them an mm -hmm. opportunity. And I love when I transitioned out of the performing arts where my career there was kind of about me as a performer. And I realized pretty quickly that I loved being a director and I loved being able to direct and create platforms for people to be able to flourish and to be able to have a place to express themselves. I kind of went, I've done enough expressing, now I want other people to. So we do a call every year for artists to apply to the gallery. Last year we had 140 applicants, wow. which is pretty amazing. Uh, I think the most From that we have- From all over the island, I suppose. All or over just... Canada. Oh, yeah. Okay. So our hey, mandate wow. here is Canadian. Mm -hmm. So um, it's about half and half. The islands, surrounding islands, BC is about 50% of our uh, roster and then 50% are from the rest of Canada. So I really look through artists that are applying and I look for people and they they're emerging mid-career and established like mm -hmm. it's it's an open call to anyone. Uh, we encourage uh, POCs, BIPOC, uh, queer artists in particular that's part of our call out. Um, but I look for people that are doing something that maybe I haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. Something that I go, there's there's a lot of artists out there and you need to find something that separates you from everybody else. Yeah, you have to be distinguished or defined as For an artist, sure. right? And working, I always say, working at a high caliber. Everybody that's in here, whether it's abstract, figurative, landscape, they're working at a high caliber. What would you call a high caliber? I love your questions. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. You're like, Spill the tea. Um, <laughs> there's one thing an artist said to me once that I love, and that art is 75% science and 25% magic. I haven't heard that before. I love it because it's I like true. more magic than science, though. <laughs> but anyway, proceed. Well, and the people that go to magic, um, there's just not enough technique. Okay, so okay. when we go see a dance production and you see a group of dancers that are doing choreography, if the choreography isn't right, it's not successful. You know, you're looking at people that, like, they're not hitting their okay. choreography. We've all seen portrait work where you're like, that face is not good. Mm -hmm. Like, it's mm -hmm. not, like, it's okay to say something is not good. And that is when there's maybe too much magic. 
too much oh, okay. interpretation. <laughs> Even when you look, like if people are like, well, what's, what's with Picasso? That Picasso, that was technical, mm. what Picasso yeah. was doing. So even though mm. he wasn't going for realism, the technique was there. So even though I say t science, I think it's, I didn't want to misquote the person that said it to me. So I see it as technique. Mm. It's 75% mm -hmm. technique. Oh yeah, one, for sure. One artist that I used to work with, he said when he went to art school, uh, one of his instructors would come in, take a brown paper bag, scrunch it up, throw it on a table and go draw it. And then just like leave the room. And at first he was like, what's with this instructor? He's terrible. Like, why does he keep doing that? And then what it was, was to learn how to do shadow, how to do lines, how to be, how to technically. How to pay attention to detail. For sure. Mm -hmm. So that for my gallery, there is that level of precision that I look for. Yeah. So would you say technique is the same as style? Or there are two Ooh, different things? I, well, it's one thing. <laughs> or is I, technique and the magic the style? No, style, like, you know, in the drag world, we'd say taste level. Like when mm -hmm. we look at a queen and we go, oh my God, their taste level is problematic. <laughs> it's because you're kind of looking at it where like a bad print is a bad print. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. it's, it's straight up in, for our opinions to mm -hmm. that queen. They're like, oh, the print, I love it. So I don't care. <laughs> well, your taste level is questionable. It's <laughs> the same with art that sometimes palette, we talk about uh -huh. palette. And like, if we look at Julie's palette behind us, there are fabulous colors. Like with food, mm -hmm. we say we eat with our eyes. It's the same with art. Sometimes people's palettes just aren't appealing or mm -hmm. aren't appetizing. And it's also when you think about what you want in your home. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes taste level, style, like I, I review 140 applicants a year and I go through them quickly because for a lot of it, I just sometimes go, I don't like this person's style. Yeah, exactly. So like I said, you were saying magic and technique. Mm -hmm. So that combined will result in the style that they are Style is expressing. in the magic. Oh, I style see. Style okay. fits within kind of that. What colors are they choosing? Uh, shape, all that I think is in that. So what are the elements of technique? Uh, it's skill. Like it's, okay. it's creating shadow. It's about creating depth. It's about uh, perception. Like sometimes a landscape just looks flat. You're like, mm -hmm. there's just not really anything. There's no three dimensionality. There is, uh, not everybody needs to go to art school. Like that's the thing is sometimes people are like, oh, well, I never went to art school. I'm self-taught. The other thing about a lot of art school programs is they actually don't ta overly teach you how to paint. It's more of kind of an academic understanding of the craft. And okay. so it's a it, lot of theory. It's a lot of theory, mm -hmm. like even theater, like we had our studio classes, but then so we would you art say history. art school teaches more on technique than on magic. Each one is different. And mm -hmm. that's the thing when you're looking into art school, for those of you that are watching that are thinking, <laughs> um, do your research into what art school makes sense. Some art schools are more studio based where you get to do a little bit more, quite a bit more practice. Mm -hmm. And then some are very academia, more of kind of like an art history background. So, each so how long have you been at this again? Uh, I'm in coming, Victoria. In Victoria, a year. Okay. So the gallery is about to turn five. So it was in Nanaimo for four years, here for a year. But in total, I've been... A gallerist uh, for how many years? Almost now? 10 years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So part of what you do is uh, mentor young artists and mm. young queer artists. What does that look like? If I came in and said, I want to be a world famous artist and here's my 10 pieces. What does that process look like? For sure. What most people that use my mentoring skills for is I don't overly teach them how to paint. Mm. I, don't, I don't have a background in creating art mm -hmm. in that way, visual art. So what I can give them insights in is how to properly apply to a gallery. Because I can tell you, a lot of people do it very poorly. Mm -hmm. It's the same as applying for a job. When people come into our establishments and say like, oh, can I show you my art on my phone? No. <laughs> like, no. And when you're going through and you're well, like, on, oh. it's an iPhone. It, it drives yeah, us crazy. Like, it's like. <laughs> Be professional, like you've spent all this time on your career leading up to it, sometimes studying. Like, 
I love Eminem's quote, like, you've only got one shot, do not miss your chance. And I kind of tell people, like, wait until the, for our gallery in November, when we do a call for submissions, and then when people say, no, I'm going to show you right now, I'm like, <laughs> you just, <laughs> you're being difficult right out of the gate, and I don't know if this is going to go work. well. <laughs> Yeah, so so the mentoring, um, I kind of guide people. I look at, so I do what's called a critique. So I do ask them to kind of show me, not usually 10, because I usually say like, show me your four most recent or mm. four pieces mm -hmm. that define you. And then I get a sense of the artist. And then I also, because my knowledge of other galleries across Canada uh, is part of my job, is to know what's happening at other galleries, mm -hmm. what their roster looks like, what they represent. Um, and then I help them develop a por portfolio. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I tell them to veer. Like sometimes I say like, this body of work maybe is not what- What you should be doing. Yeah, and it's hard like in that moment because you want to honor what they've been doing. But sometimes, and sometimes I don't take on mentoring if I know that the person's body of work isn't something that I can work with. Mm. Um, so that can be awkward. Um, but the ones that I do, sometimes I, I shake up their process. Like sometimes the artists will come to me and they've had gallery representation or they've been trying. So we try to, we try to crack through and figure out maybe what they could apply with. It's been great. Some of the people that I've worked with have landed galleries, which is super exciting. Some artists that um, our gallery has been their first gallery now are in multiple galleries so those are success stories there you go. uh some were cultivating to get to that point so yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so as it stands awesome. now how many artists do you have again in your roster we have about 40. okay yeah from yeah. the 140 that applied do you know what from the most recent 140 i took one oh wow okay. yeah yeah so galleries usually at the end of every year we evaluate uh sometimes it's technical like sales like if we haven't made sales Sometimes we say, you know, we, we tried. And so we tend to say bye to a certain amount of artists every year to be able to say hello. That's the only nice way of well, <laughs> looking at it. In, out, in, out, right? Well, as gallerists, like, you know, we, we, we pay rent for our mm -hmm. spaces and we're not doing an artist any favors if we're not selling their work and mm -hmm. they're not doing any favors if their work isn't selling through us. So it's, yeah. It's not a great conversation to have, but mm -hmm. you just kind of have to, like... It's a reality of the business. It right? is. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, of those 40 artists that you're representing right now, how many of them are queer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, the ones that are open with me, uh, we do have five queer artists mm -hmm. uh, with the gallery. And one of the things that when we do the call for submissions, you know, it puts us as gallerists in a tough spot because I actually didn't have any uh, POCs apply this mm -hmm. year. So sometimes people will come into our establishments and ask us like, oh, well, how many uh, people of color do you have mm -hmm. represented? And it can be tricky because mm -hmm. if people aren't applying to the gallery- Yeah, you can't do anything about that. It's tough. So even though as a very openly queer business owner, you know, I am actively recruiting for uh, POCs and queer people, it's also that they have to be putting in the work mm -hmm. and applying to us. We are a gallery that uh, over 65% of our roster is female, which is something in the Canadian gallery system is rare. Oh, most, that's good. Mm -hmm, most representation in galleries, it's not me throwing shade at other galleries, but it tends to be a male-dominated industry. Mm -hmm. And so we are very proud that 65% uh, are female, but we also acknowledge and love 
the 35% that are male, we're not a gallery that's like, that's a bad thing. It's just something that we're aware of mm -hmm. and we do celebrate everyone. Also, well, you've told me that uh, you've been at this business for 10 years. What are some of the highlights that would possibly inspire the artists who are watching that you could share with us today? Like, you know, throwing parties. Oh, wow. We oh, love I like the sound of parties. that. Yes. <laughs> Exhibition. When's the next party? <laughs> right. April 1st. <laughs> okay. uh, you're invited. Um, <clears throat> events are, are fabulous. It's a coming together. Uh, I don't try to go back into the past, but, you know, it was a hard couple of years that we've come through with COVID. And so the arts in general, it was very interesting. Like it was hard for us to pivot and adapt the performing arts in particular, visual arts. We were able to a little bit more, but we weren't able to come together. And mm -hmm. as we know, as queer people, it's extremely important that oh, we yes. do come together. Community is important. It's huge, yeah. you know, and the isolation that people experienced during those times you know, as a gallery, we weren't able to throw events. So mm. we, we weren't able to bring our people together and our allies together. And so I love being able to, I, I talk about this gallery as a stage. And, you know, when we don't have an audience, it's not a great show. <laughs> so, Fair. right? A lot of people were saying during COVID, you know, why? Because we were digital, like everything that we were doing was Instagram and it was videos. And they were like, oh, maybe you don't even need a space. And I was like, yes, we do. Because when you look at art in person, you know, yeah. I remember the first time you came in and when you see people spending time with art, when they're really looking at these creations and what is made and how it's made and how it makes them feel when people have visceral reactions and, you know, sometimes yeah. people get emotional in here and, you know, they're like, I'm sorry. I'm like, don't apologize. This is why art matters. Um, <laughs> Cause it affects us and whether people acknowledged it or not, but it was very much the arts that got us through those times. We were- Yeah, it's been said over and over again. For sure. And even people that don't think about that it was, it was, it was like- <laughs> That's not gonna change, Our right? industry helped you, so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so for artists in that, like I just think it is that that coming together, um, you know, it's, it's hard. A lot of artists um, are not, they don't like to go to events. Like a lot of artists are, are very reclusive and so making it out to events. You're solitary artists. Yeah, like it's hard. Sometimes I'm like, come, like maybe like meet people and they're like, I'm good. And I'm like, okay. So like do your own thing. Don't feel Isn't like that you- part of the persona that artists have to project and you're like, I'm eccentric. I'm... Oh, I've, it's, it's a <laughs> fabulous spectrum that we have here at this gallery. Like some show up to the openings and like, full outfits and they're like, I've arrived. There you go. Others are like, I hope you don't think that I'm like, it's just, I have a hard time in those settings. And I'm like, no, you're good. So I think, I guess mm -hmm. kind of what I'm saying is like, just be actually true to who you are mm -hmm. and don't think that you have, to, there is no mold of how to yeah, be Yeah, I think an as an artist, that's the key to be true to yourself, right? For sure. Mm -hmm. I think what I would give advice to uh, artists is the best piece of advice I got when I was in university was from my favorite playwriting teacher, Kit Brennan, where she said, don't sit at bars talking about the play that you're gonna write, just go home and write it. And with artists that I mentor in particular, that's the most important, you just have to do the work. Mm -hmm. It is work, you have to put it in. As soon as you think that you've had a breakthrough, you need to do it 10 times over. Exactly. So don't think that that first breakthrough piece, oh my gosh, th this is ready. No, make it better, yeah. go further, explore more, try new material. Um, Success doesn't come easy. No. In any field. For sure. <clears throat> and like, I love watching, it's a bit of a veer off, but like, I love watching award shows because there is this authenticity. We look at, you know, celebrities and especially what happened at the Oscars this year, mm -hmm. where it was quite a few POCs that, mm -hmm. that won. And, you know, like those conversations, like these are just real people that are really putting their blood, sweat and tears and passion into their art form. 
but you you got to do the work. It's oh, it's yeah. rarely handed. Like even Jamie Lee Curtis, she's like, okay, yes, my parents were famous, but she still shows up to mm. set with mm -hmm. her work. And, you know, it really came across in her speech that it was like, you put into work, you get the reward. Yeah. And I yeah. love that she acknowledged her privilege, like right a hundred, off the bat. A hundred percent, you know, but it is also that it she has navigated a career that Absolutely. has been very unconventional. She's done some really bad movies, but they kind of like kept, she acknowledged it. She's like, thank you for sticking by me through, you know, so I don't know, but it is, you have, you have to do the work. The work. And right. I love my painters and sculptors who, you know, touch base with me. Some of them, you know, send me text messages, like as they're working, they're like, oh my God, look what just happened. And I'm like, yes. I was in an artist studio last night with a client and looking at these three pieces, like my mind was just like blown to see, yeah, I, I love what artists do. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, before we close, looking mm. forward, mm -hmm. what's in store? We have an amazing year planned here at the gallery. Um, yeah, we're just going to continue being a platform for queer artists, for artists of, of every persuasion, um, to encourage them to create amazing things. Uh, also it's not always about like sometimes, you know, we're like the artist, the artist. I love working with clients. I love working with collectors. Uh, those of us that like, I don't paint, I don't know how. Even when I was a drag artist, my paint was terrible. Um, I was more of a performer and I just would end up slapping on glitter and go, good enough, and then hit the stage. Um, but I love working with collectors that over the years, I like see their collections of art develop. Mm. And so not everybody at home when it's like, maybe I should be an artist. Not everybody needs to be an artist. <laughs> Being a collector is just as good because without collectors... Be an art supporter. <laughs> 100%. Buy the art, yes. you know? It's it's so important. Like, it's... And I love artists that, that buy work. Like, I purchase art. Um, yeah, so be a supporter of the arts in that regard. And, yeah. yeah. Well, like we always say on Queer View Mirror, representation matters. Mm -hmm. Get out there and let your freak flag fly. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely high. <laughs> Well, Joe, thank you so much for joining us today. This has really been informative and you have a gorgeous gallery. I'd recommend everybody come down here and have a look. Um, and I want to talk to you about buying that piece over by the door. Fabulous. Okay, well, that's the, la the next part. After the interview, we're going to go for a tour. We're going <laughs> right to Right after this. Out. I was so excited when he walked into the bedroom with bags from Gibson's Fine Linens. I knew then that I was in for a night of great comfort and outstanding quality. I've never seen such great value. I'm looking so stylish now, and there's still so many options to choose from. So here we have a Vancouver Island artist, Andrea Seuss. I love her palette. Um, I love a term instead of abstract, which is mark making which is kind of the placement of marks and how they kind of make the eye react. And I just, I love everything about her work. Let's keep going. Okay. Next up, we have another artist. We've got Peggy Bell. I love uh, the grains that come through in her pieces, the palette. Uh, for me, they're kind of like uh, polished beach stones, but like amplified and like gorgeous. So good. Let's keep going. All right. Oh, I like this one. <laughs> oh. So Jennifer DeGroote, one of our queer artists, I'm absolutely <laughs> in love with this piece. This is called Kiss It Off Me. Jennifer works with just four tubes of paint, four colors, and oh, like wow. just the way that she's able to utilize that, this hard black line, and then her models are always amazing. <laughs> uh, and these? Uh, yes, so behind the desk, this is Chrissy Nickerson, a artist from Canmore, Alberta. Sometimes I love having non-West Coast people paint the West Coast because they kind of use different colors and are a little bit bolder. So love And they see it from a different perspective, I suppose. 100%. Uh, blues, <laughs> yes. So uh, blues are always trending, as we see. Uh, what I love about Chrissy's work here is kind of this small pixelation that happens, very bold brush strokes, and then this kind of zoomed out, zoomed in, West Coast stunning. <laughs> Yeah, it reminds me of Tofino. Is that what's trying to be? It is Tofino. 
You're so good. <laughs> <laughs> this piece is incredible. So this is gold foil that Chrissy Nickerson has done. It is bold. Uh, I love sometimes when a client walks in and I know that they're going to be the type of person that's drawn to a piece like this. So uh, yeah, I can't wait to find a home for it. Is Gabrielle Strong, grew up on the West Coast, lives in Vernon. I just love the boldness of the sky. Little bit of landscape horizon line here. It is fantastic. I love this. Oh, I love this one. Right? This is an Ontario-based artist named Tracy Bolche. This is just beautiful, bold red. I love her underpaint is a term that we refer to in the art world where underneath is this great crimson red, which all the other colors that she puts on top of that just gives it a bit of an mm -hmm. amplification. Yeah. It makes it all the other colors pop. Sweet. I love to talk to you about Jacinthe Rivard. She is a Quebec based artist. The wallpaper in these is absolutely gorgeous. There is this vintage feel mm -hmm. with her work may west seabreeze fan playboy the playboy is from 1969 of course right as we do <laughs> love her for that so cheeky yeah she is uh, this photorealist artist and i'm obsessed blues are trending charlie easton he's a wonderful artist based in vancouver um again reinterpreting the west coast he is all about light the creation of light and um i Love finding homes for these. Uh, we talked earlier about artist Jennifer de Groot, and these are two examples of her work. The artist in this instance uses herself as model and her partner, and we just love these pieces. We love that there's just this beautiful voyeuristic quality, sensuality, and a lot of galleries unfortunately veer away from nudes where we're a gallery that celebrates them. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. That's a great soundbite. <laughs> Next up, um, we have a Canmore, Alberta artist, Carrie Langlois. Carrie is known in her other galleries as a landscape artist. And what's interesting about these pieces is that she is projecting her landscape paintings onto herself as the model. So oh, again, so artists, yeah, using themselves as subject, but also their subject within their subject. But Carrie has some really interesting, this is a salting technique that she uses to create this almost kind of snowy, otherworldly effect in her work. They're moody, they're fabulous, and I love that um, it's almost like she's wearing like a cute wig. <laughs> is that her hair? It is. So yeah. healthy. Right? <laughs> Damn her, no flyaways. <laughs> Here we have E.R. Gott's work. Uh, what I love about E.R. Gott's work is that there is this uh, vintage newspaper type application below. And then these are three dimensional in the sense that these are all hand carved out. So all the black oh, wow, areas really? have been carved. This Boy Scout series that he's been working in. As you in. said, put in the work. <laughs> put in the work, mm -hmm. yeah. He's an artist that after he does these, he always says how much his hands hurt. And I say, you can just paint him black, but he goes, it's not the same. So an artist that really throws himself into all aspects and they are fantastic. Um, here we have the work of Donovan Rose, who is an artist that lives in Duncan. This is a composition that as a queer person, it really speaks to me. It's a composition that he's visited a few times for me, I, I really identify with this character. Like, is he outcast or yeah, the odd his, man out? He's not part of the group. Mm -hmm. Totally. His physicality speaks to that, the kind of the awkwardness. Mm -hmm. These characters are a little bit more confident and things like that. So I think it's interesting. We've, we've sold this piece to quite a few queer people, different versions of it, interpretations. Sometimes artists will do commissions. I had a, a queer client who needed it to be smaller for a space that he wanted. And then there was a fun moment where he said, can one of these guys have a red bathing suit? And then <laughs> we went, of course. So some artists do commissions and that's an interesting thing that you can do. And Donovan's work um, is absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. Is it ever? All right, this is the work of Deborah Bacos. These are brand new pieces that came to the gallery. Deborah is always uh, exploring theme and emotion in her work. This body of work, I 
I know what she is alluding to in these pieces, but it's always exciting to hear people's reactions from what they see, because there's clearly something being said with these swings that are in motion, this kind of sand or other entity within the seat kind of flowing off of it. So uh, yeah, visceral pieces, people usually have an impact when they see her work. What impression do you get, Scott? I want to go to like a lost childhood kind of theme. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's what I That's see. That's what I was thinking, like something disappeared from the mm -hmm. scene, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. there was something there a split second ago, it's gone now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, there's a million interpretations. And it's blue. <laughs> Target client right there, right? Let's go look totally. at some blue art. I have a yeah, feeling he likes like blue. That, it's red. Blue. This is blue. Oh, that's blue. <laughs> Sold. Well, you know that song so by Axel 65? That's a wonderful tour. Mm -hmm. If you do get a chance, Mary Gallery in Victoria. Gallery Merrick. Oh, Gallery Merrick, sorry. <laughs> All right. That's a wrap. Mm.